Hello, welcome back to Mark's House and Garden UK. This is a tree fern, Dixonia antarctica. I'll talk to you about this in a moment. One of the wonderful things about having a YouTube channel and creating content, apart from the engagement and the lovely comments I get on my videos, is the fact that you do get paid some money. YouTube pays me money now. I have a monetized YouTube channel and I get paid money. It's actually from Google. Google AdSense put adverts next to my videos and I get a share of the advertising revenue. And I tend to invest that revenue back into the garden because it helps me make more content. And ultimately, that revenue is coming from you, the viewers. So I have to say thank you for watching my videos because the videos pay the advertisers, which gives me money to invest in the garden. So it's a, a nice cycle. So I appreciate your support. Let me talk to you about this wonderful new tree fern that we've just invested in. Look at this beautiful curve. I bought this for a very specific reason. I'm creating a Jurassic jungle garden around the perimeter of my existing wildlife pond. I've already done or started a series of videos on that and I'll link to them at the end of this one. The ponds are dug, I've ordered the liners and they're about to be filled with water. I've seen newts and toads this week in my wildlife pond, so everything is going well in that corner of the garden. What I want to do with this tree fern and I'm going to have to come up with an innovative scheme to make this happen is I want this to be planted at the edge of one of the new ponds and I want it to grow out over the water. And that's going to be an interesting task because it's quite top heavy and it will sway from side to side because of these fronds are like big sails in the wind. So I've got to find a way of securing this. And I've only got about 18 inches here that we will contact with the ground. I need to secure it there so that that remains stable. I've got some ideas. I might have a piece of uh, steel made which spikes down into the garden and has a curve which will sit underneath this and support it. I might use guy ropes, but there's all kinds of ideas running around in my head to how I'm going to support this. If you've got some ideas, feel free to share them with me in the comments box below this video. So tree fern, Dixonia antarctica. This will eventually put roots down. I did a video on uh, the roots that uh, tree ferns make. It's called, Do Tree Ferns Produce Roots? And I proved in that video that they do, and you can watch that. Again, I'll link to that at the end of this one. A lot of people think that the life in a tree fern is just up there at the crown. And I used to think exactly the same thing. And still, until I started planting them. And all the tree ferns that I've ever planted, despite the fact that I thought the life was up here, and despite also the fact that they'd just been sliced off with a chainsaw at the bottom, have rooted. They produce lovely fibrous roots. And I've actually got one just behind the camera there. And I'll, I'll demonstrate with that one in a moment, that the fact that they do actually produce roots and you'll be able to show exactly, I'll be able to show you exactly the case of a rooted tree fern over there. Eventually this one will root. I suspect it will root down there underneath. And also if I were to pile some soil up there, it will also root down into there. So the mechanism I have to come up with to support this as it protrudes out over the water is only going to need to be a temporary measure because eventually it will secure itself into the soil. Um, I'll probably leave the mechanism in place for a good few years to make sure it's good and steady and supported. The other misconception that I always made was the fact that the roots down there don't feed the top. And in actual fact, I've been corrected on that. A subscriber um, quite rightly pointed out that actually that does eventually feed that as well. You can feed the crown of a tree fern just by dropping a few, just a couple or three. Uh, pelleted chicken manure tablets in the top there. You don't want to overfeed it. Um, now, this time of year, springtime, a lot of people that have tree ferns are, are looking at them with bated breath to see if they've survived the winter. This is quite a hardy plant. Apparently it can survive down to minus 10. I've done a couple of videos on tree fern winter protection and basically I wrap the crown with insulation and coffee sacks and I put some oak leaves in the top. It's important not to let it dry out, but you don't want to be watering it in the winter. And then come springtime, you can take all that protection out and it should, in theory, start producing lovely new fronds. And you can see those fronds are like little, I always describe them as kind of gorilla's knuckles. They're just waiting in the crown there. There's some in there, so I'll show you some video of it. They're waiting in the crown there and as spring arrives and it starts to get warmer, 
and you then start to saturate that with water they open up and they produce these lovely long fronds and i've got tree ferns here where the the span of it must be about 10 to 12 feet wide so it's a great kind of an umbrella for planting shade loving plants underneath so that's the new tree fern the new dixonia antarctica let's just go and have a look at one which i placed on the ground six months ago and i'll wobble it and you can see that as i wobble it the roots have made headway into the ground and they were they are moving the ground beneath the tree fern let's go there next and this is that tree fern it's just been placed on the ground there is no hole dug beneath that I did put some stakes around the bottom just to stop the bottom from slipping away from under it and I also staked it against this old piece of wood here just to secure it vertically and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start moving the top but I'll show you the bottom and as I move the top you'll see that the bottom moves and that's proof if proof were needed that there's roots going out all around the base of this this one is also going next to the pond in my new Jurassic jungle garden. I've got a collection of three. I've got behind the camera there, again behind the camera, another specimen which is about seven or eight foot tall. I'll show you some images of it whilst I'm talking. So I like plants in collections of odd numbers. So I think these three tree ferns in a little grouping by the water with the bent one hanging out over the water and lots of other ferns under planted will make quite a lovely little scene. But let's get back to this one, which I'm telling you is rooted. And I'll bring the camera and I'll put it down on the roots. And as I wobble the top, you'll see the bottom. Now these are those stakes I put in. I just drove those in really just to top, stop this from sliding from one side to the other. There's my feet. And I'll wobble the top of this now. And you will see the earth move beneath my feet. Can you see it moving over there? And that's the roots that have gone out into the ground. There's no harm done when I move this because I'll take those with it and they will help establish it in its new position. I'll also take the stake with it as well. But you can see there, after only six months, that's already put quite a few roots out into the ground there. You can, that's evidenced by the movement here. So there we go. Interesting times at Mark's House and Garden UK. A new tree fern, a group of three for around the new Jurassic Jungle Garden. Hope you've enjoyed that and found it interesting. Please do subscribe and hit the notifications bell if you want to follow the Jurassic Jungle Garden journey. But once again, thank you very much for watching my videos and commenting. I do appreciate you being there. And as I've already explained, the fact that you're watching my videos, it's costing you nothing. But pennies a day go towards my projects and I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Bye for now.